In this lesson, we wanna talk about multiplying a matrix by a scalar. All right, so when we talk about multiplying matrices, there's gonna be two scenarios that you're gonna come across. The first scenario, which is much simpler, involves multiplying some real number called a scalar by a given matrix. The second scenario is where we're going to multiply two matrices together. Now, the second case is much more involved, and we're gonna look at that process in the next lesson. All right, so how do we multiply a matrix by a scalar? Well, again, just to be clear here, when we say a scalar, this just means some real number, or to be more specific, a real number that is not inside of a matrix. Okay, so when we see this in matrix algebra, we call it a scalar. So if we take that scalar and we multiply it by a matrix, this is where we get the term scalar multiplication. Now, what you're going to see in your textbook is something like this. If matrix A is equal to, again, this just identifies the matrix by the individual elements that it's kind of made up of. So you say this lowercase a sub ij. Again, the i here is the row, the j here is the column. And again, this is just generic notation. So if this is an M by N matrix and K is a scalar, so some real number that's not in a matrix, the scalar multiple of A by K is the M by N matrix given by, and again, this notation is pretty simple overall, you have K times the matrix A. So the scalar K times the matrix A gives us a matrix that's made up of these elements here, which is K multiplied by each individual element of A, right? This lowercase A sub IJ. And again, when you see this kind of notation, it may be a bit confusing, but let's just jump into an example. And you'll see that it's very, very easy to do this process. So suppose I have matrix A and it's made up of these elements here. Again, in the first row, we're gonna have three, seven, and eight. The second row will have negative two, 11, and one. And the third row will have five, two, and 22. So this is a three by three matrix, three rows, three columns. It's a square matrix. So if I asked you to find negative five times matrix A, what would you do? Again, all you want to do is multiply negative five, this scalar here, by each and every element of matrix A. So a very simple process. So let me just kind of write this over here. Negative five A is going to be equal to, I'm just going to multiply negative five by every element over here. So three times negative five is negative 15. And then if we do seven times negative five, that's negative 35. If we do negative five times eight, that's negative 40. And then if I do negative five times negative two, that's positive 10. If I do negative five times 11, that's negative 55. And then negative five times one is negative five. For the last row, we have negative five times five, which is negative 25. Then we have negative five times two, which is negative 10. And then negative five times 22, which is negative 110. So this matrix right here, negative five A, is a scalar multiple of the original matrix A. Okay, so that's all we're really saying. And let's just look at another example. It's pretty easy overall. So for the second example, we have matrix B and we have, again, in the first row, four, six, and 16. In the second row, two, 10, 12. And in the third and final row, we have 10, four, and 14. So another three row and three column matrix. So again, it's a three by three, a square matrix. So if we wanna find one half times B, again, all I would do is multiply every element in this matrix B by a half. Okay, that's all we're doing. Very, very simple process. So one half times four is two, one half times six is three, one half times 16 is eight, one half times two is one, one half times 10 is five, one half times 12 is six, one half times 10 is five, one half times four is two, and one half times 14 is seven, okay? So this would be one half times B. So now let's kind of look at a combination of some things that we've learned already. So in this section, when you talk about scalar multiplication, you get a few problems on scalar multiplication, and then they kind of combine things together. So what we'll see is that we're going to do some problems with addition and subtraction with scalar multiplication involved. And then we're also going to look at some equations. So suppose we have matrix A, which is made up of with the first row three, one, and five, and the second row negative two, zero, and six. And then for matrix B, we have the first row as four, seven, and two, and the second row as zero, one, and eight. And each of these have two rows and three columns, okay? So it's a two by three in each case. So we know that since they're the same size, they can be added together. Now, our problem is gonna be to do three times A and then add the result of two times B, okay? So three A plus two B. 
And so what I'm going to do first is find 3a. Okay, I want to find 3a. So let me start by just rewriting a here real quick for reference, and then we'll delete it. So we have 3, 1, and 5. And we have negative 2, we have 0, and we have 6. Okay, so if I want 3 times a, again, a very, very simple process. I would multiply every element in matrix A by 3. Okay, that's all I'm doing. So 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 5 is 15, and then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 6 is 18. Okay, so let me erase this, and let me just drag this out of the way, and let me write down B here for reference. So for B, again, we have 4, 7, and 2, and then we have 0, 1, and 8, and if I wanted 2 times b, let me just write that here. So 2 times b would be what? I would multiply every element by 2. So this would be 8. This would be 14. This would be 4. 0 would stay the same, right? Because 0 times anything is still 0. This would be 2. And this would be 16. Okay? So now let me kind of arrange these in a way that we can see what's going on. So I know 3a equals this and 2b equals this. So I want the sum of these guys. Again, you can only add two matrices if they're the same size or order. And in each case, we have a two row by three column matrix. So we're good to go on that. So if I want 3a plus 2b, I would say it's what? Well, I'm just going to take every element from 3a and add the corresponding element from 2b. So 9 plus 8 would give me 17. 3 plus 14 would give me 17 again. 15 plus 4 would give me 19, and then negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6, 0 plus 2 is going to give me 2, and then 18 plus 16 is going to give me 34, okay? All right, so this is our result, 3a plus 2b. So it's a very easy process to not only do scalar multiplication, but to combine it with some addition or subtraction operations. All right, so let's look at another problem that involves kind of combining the scalar multiplication with addition or subtraction. So we have 4a minus 5b. We're using the same two matrices. So here's our a and here's our b. If you want to copy those down real quick, you can. I'm just going to write them out real fast. So I'm going to say that a is equal to, again, we have 3, 1, and 5 in the first row. And we have negative 2, 0, and 6 in the second row. Then for matrix b, we're going to have 4, 7, and 2 in the first row. And we're going to have 0, 1, and 8 in the second row. All right, so if we want to do this 4a minus 5b, my suggestion to you when you have subtraction is to add the opposite. So let's just do plus negative there. So when I get to this scalar multiplication with matrix B, I'm going to do negative 5 times B, and then I can just add the matrices, okay? It makes it a little bit easier to not make a silly sign mistake because the worst thing with working with matrices is you go through all this work and then you get the wrong answer, and you basically have to rip the page up and start over. Okay, so if I do 4 times A, 4 times A, this is equal to 1. It's just 4 times every entry in A. So 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20, okay? And then down here, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, 4 times 0 is 0, and then 4 times 6 is 24. So I can get rid of this, I don't need this anymore. And let me just kind of slide this down out of the way. And then now I want negative 5 times B. Okay, so negative 5 times b is going to give me 1. So it's negative 5 times every element. So negative 5 times 4 is going to be negative 20. Negative 5 times 7 is going to be negative 35. Negative 5 times 2 is going to be negative 10. And then we have negative 5 times 0, which is 0. Negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. And lastly, negative 5 times 8, which is negative 40. Okay, so let me erase this. And I'll just drag this down here so it's out of our way. And now what we want to do is this operation here. So what is 4a plus negative 5b or 4a minus 5b as we originally saw it? Well, again, to add two matrices together or to subtract matrices, you have to have two matrices that are the same size or the same order. Again, in each case, we have a two by three matrix. So we're good to go, right? Two rows, three columns. So we're just going to add corresponding entries. So 12 plus negative 20 is going to be negative eight. Then 4 plus negative 35 is going to be negative 31. Then 20 plus negative 10 is going to be positive 10. Then down here in my second row, I'd have negative 8 plus 0, which is negative 8. I'd have 0 plus negative 5, which is negative 5. 
and I'd have 24 plus negative 40, which is going to give me negative 16. So this matrix here would be the result of doing 4a plus negative 5b, or again, 4a minus 5b. All right, so before we kind of move any further, I want to go over some of the properties of scalar multiplication that you're gonna see in your textbook, just so that these things are clear and you don't get confused by them. So let's define A and B to be these matrices of the order M by N. And then K and H are going to be these scalars, or again, these real numbers that are not inside of a matrix. So the first one is kind of the associative property. We know about the associative property of multiplication with real numbers, right? That tells us if we're multiplying three or more numbers together. We can group that multiplication any way we'd like. We always get the same result. Well, the same thing is true here, right? So if I had K times H done first, this is inside of parentheses, these two scalars, then the result of that is multiplied by the matrix A. It's the same thing as if you did one of the scalars times the matrix A first, and then took that result and multiplied it by the remaining scalar. Now, the next two are extremely obvious. If you have one as a scalar, meaning you have one times your matrix A, you get matrix A back. And the reason for this is because one is the identity element in multiplication. So if I'm going through and multiplying everything in matrix A by one, I just get that element back. So it's an exact copy of the matrix A. The next one is if we have zero as a scalar. So zero times matrix A will give us a zero matrix. And again, the notation for this varies, but generally speaking, you'll see a zero with the kind of order. We said these were M by N matrices. So we'll say this is a zero matrix that is of the order M by N. And let me make that M a little bit better, okay? And again, because I'm multiplying zero by every element of A, I'm getting a matrix with all zeros as entries, and it's of the order M by N. So that's why we define this as a zero matrix of the order M by N. All right, lastly, we have a distributive property with scalar multiplication. This one's pretty obvious as well. So we have something like K, a scalar, multiplied by these two matrices added together, so A plus B. We could say it's the same as doing K times A, plus k times b. All right, then the second part of this would be if we had k plus h, these two scalars, inside of parentheses, those guys are being added together first, and then the result is multiplied by this matrix A. This is the same as doing k the scalar times the matrix A plus h the scalar times the matrix A. All right, so let's look at a little matrix equation. We're gonna see more and more of these as we progress through the chapter. And we're gonna start getting into some scenarios where we'll actually be able to kind of solve a linear system with a method other than the Gaussian elimination and the Gauss-Jordan elimination. We'll see that we can kind of use matrices in a different way with the Kramer's rule and then also with kind of solving by using the inverse of a matrix. But we'll get to that later on. So for right now, we have this Matrix A, which has negative one and three in the first row and four and seven in the second row. And matrix B, which has six and five in the first row and zero and nine in the second row. So they're each two by two square matrices. So what we're saying for our equation is that two, some scalar times some unknown matrix X plus our matrix A is equal to our matrix B. So we would solve this the same way as if we had a linear equation kind of in one variable, right? So I wanna isolate X my unknown matrix. And to do that, the first thing is to subtract matrix A away from each side of the equation. So this would cancel. And over here, I'm just gonna write this in line and say this is B minus A. So now what I'd have is two times matrix X is equal to B minus A. So how do I get rid of this two from over here? Well, we can divide both sides by two, or what I'm just gonna say, since we're working in terms of multiplication, I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by one half, okay? So I'm gonna multiply this side by a half. Let me kind of move this down a little bit so it fits. So I'm gonna multiply this side by a half, and I'm gonna multiply this side by a half. Again, I'm gonna wrap this in some parentheses to make sure that multiplies each kind of matrix there. So I know that this is going to cancel and I'm left with just my matrix X, which is what I want. So what we have here is one half on the right times the quantity matrix B minus matrix A. And remember, because of our distributive property, we know that we could do one half times B minus one half times A, or we could do it this way. It doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead, kind of erase all this. We know what we wanna find. Let me kind of scooch this down a little bit. 
it's going to be hard to kind of do this on one sheet. So let me just kind of copy this. Let's go down to a fresh sheet where we have lots of room to think and work. So let's start out by just doing B minus A first. Okay. And then we'll multiply the result by the scalar one half. I think that's a bit easier. So if I do again, matrix B, this was, we had six and five in our top row. In the bottom row, we had zero and nine. And then for matrix A, we had what? We had negative one and three in the top row. In the bottom row, we had four and seven. So again, if you want, you could do plus negative or you could do minus. So if I'm doing minus, I would do six minus a negative one. If I was doing plus negative, I'd end up doing six plus the opposite of this, which is positive. So whatever you want to do, it's fine. I usually do plus a negative. Okay, it makes it a little bit easier. So I would change the sign of everything here. So this would be plus, this would be negative, this would be negative, this would be negative. Okay, it just makes it easier to keep track of the signs. So B plus negative A, we're going to have what? B plus negative A is going to be equal to 6 plus 1 is 7. 5 plus negative 3 is going to be 2. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. 9 plus negative 7 is going to give me positive 2. Okay, so this is B plus negative A. And then to solve for X, I just want one half of this matrix. Okay, so let's just do this real quick. We'll erase this kind of scooch this up a little bit. And so what I'll say is this is equal to one half times seven is seven halves. We'll have one half times two, which is one. We'll have a half times negative four, which is negative two and a half times two, which is one. Okay. So our matrix X, what we're trying to find is going to have a top row of seven halves and one and a bottom row of negative two and one. Now let me copy this real quick. And let me just kind of erase this. We don't need this anymore. I'm just going to say that X is equal to, again, this matrix is going to be seven halves and one, and it's going to be negative two and one. Now, if you want to check this, and I advise you to check these when you first start, think about making sure that this equation makes sense, okay, that it's true. So two times X is what? It's two times every element in X. So two X is equal to two times seven halves is going to be seven. Two times one is two. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so this is 2 times x. So if I then add this to a, what I get b. So again, you'd add corresponding entries. So 7 plus negative 1 gives me 6. 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Negative 4 plus 4 gives me 0, and 2 plus 7 gives me 9. So we know here that our solution for x is correct.